Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service on this, the 11th of July and the 6th Sunday after Trinity. Uh, you're very welcome indeed. Today, our uh, two Bible readings both carry with them uh, difficult, challenging messages. Uh, the more famous, perhaps, is the Gospel reading of uh, John the Baptist uh, paying with his own life for standing up for truth and justice and righteousness. But we also get that in our first reading as well, the prophet Amos, his message of prophecy that is hard and causes Amaziah to protest at this harsh, harsh message being uttered. And Amos defends himself and says, I'm no prophet, nor a prophet's son. I'm a herdsman. And the Lord took me from following the flock and sent me to prophesy to my people Israel. Well, in the spirit of Amos, we begin our service this morning with a short film. It's about sheep herding. It's rather fun. Uh, perhaps when uh, you look at this film, Amos might not be so sorry to have left his sheep behind and been called by God to be a prophet instead.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. So we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we listen to that first reading about Amos, read for us by Leslie. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very centre of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile, away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it's the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel this morning is read for us by Natasha. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of the healings and other miracles for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oath and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Three things can be guaranteed to make the headlines. Royalty, sex and religion. Prince Harry with Meghan, like his mother before him, never ceases to draw the crowds. Matt Hancock and his rather over explicit expression in his relationship with one of his aides won't go away. Anything scandalous about the church is bound to cause a stir. And in the account of Herod and John the Baptist, we've got all three, the most shocking tabloid story of the day. A story that would have been muttered around Galilee with all its juicy details within days of its occurrence. Herod the king, who held his power by kowtowing to Rome, intent on fulfilling his father Herod the Great's greatest ambition to rebuild the temple, and more significantly longing one day when Rome was overthrown to be proclaimed as king of all the Jews, Herod had married Herodias, his brother's wife, and in his anger he had imprisoned John the Baptist for denouncing the marriage, not only because it was immoral, but it broke God's law and was a bad example to the people. The king was afraid of his prisoner, for he knew in his heart that he was a good and holy man. But at the same time, he was intrigued to listen to him. 
Herodias, on the other hand, hated him and couldn't wait to get rid of him. Her chance came with the birthday party. Herod had invited the greatest in the realm and at the height of the increasingly drunken celebration, he called on his stepdaughter to dance for his guests. The men loved the girl's erotic exhibition. And in his drunken stupor, the king offered to give her whatever she desired. Her mother saw her chance, the head of John the Baptist. And for all his dismay, Herod can't refuse and the deadly deed is done. We all know the grisly scene. We've seen it from artists down the centuries of the head of John on a dish presented to a little trollop. Royalty and power, sex, religion combined to offer the most poignant denunciation of human nature on biblical record. I want to take that story as a way into thinking about the relationship between politics and religion. From the earliest historical times, those two realities existed side by side often causing bloodshed, sometimes occasionally finding a peaceful way to coexist. But there is always a tension between the two. They are the two vital elements of human society. We can't live for long without either of them. Politics governs the ordering of any community. Religion gives that community meaning. Politics shows us how to live together constructively. Religion shows us why we live together in the first place and the values that are offered for us to coexist so that all may be given respect, regardless of color or race, gender or sexual orientation. And Western democracy has always insisted that the two, church and state, must be kept apart so that each may fulfill its proper role. Authoritarian regimes, on the other hand, which are on the increase the world over, use power as the final arbiter. They may tolerate or even encourage religion, provided it doesn't confront the regime and keeps it to its proper place in the personal domain. We can see that today in Myanmar, Burma, where the junta is supported by the Buddhist majority, or in India, where a corrupt Prime Minister Modi, elected and supported by a huge majority of Hindus, encourages minorities, be they Muslim or Christian, to be discriminated against, often persecuted. This is what happens when politics and religion join forces. It was equally true in Christendom when Christians were in the ascendant from the time of Constantine. In his masterly book of 2015, Not in God's Name, Jonathan Sachs, the former chief rabbi, sums it up so eloquently. Too often in the history of religion, he writes, people have killed in the name of God, in the name of the God of life, waged war in the name of the God of peace, hated in the name of the God of love, and practiced cruelty 
in the name of the God of compassion. Why, for instance, was it such a scandal that the arch-Pharisee Saul of Tarsus went after the first Christians when they declared their be belief in a different kind of God? And he stood by as Stephen was stoned to death for his faith. Why was it a scandal that the leaders of Eastern Europe, of Christian Europe, including several popes, led the Crusades and slaughtered not just Muslims and Jews, but thousands of Christians from the Eastern Church? Why is it equally scandalous in our own day that Al-Qaeda and ISIS and Bokum Haran, yes, and the cruel regime in Iran go out and murder Christians and those of religions, including their own. Why such a scandal? Because they all do it in the name of God. Jonathan Sachs again, the grace, greatest threat to the freedom of the world of the 21st century is radical, politicised religion. That's why it's such a scandal that in a so-called civilised society, which claims to be the leader and exemplar of the free world, almost 50% of the population, many of them committed Christians, Catholic and Evangelical alike, still support Donald Trump. Not, I believe, because he purports to be a Christian, Joe Biden himself is a practicing Catholic. Nor because, primarily because, Trump is anti-abortion. But because he represents white power, that group who feel increasingly threatened by young, more diverse sections of the American people. To quote Sachs again, I promise for the last time, religion, he writes, has often been the robe of sanctity to mask the naked pursuit of power. So finally, what should we do? What's the church's answer to all this? We are called to remain faithful to the biblical faith in the God of love and compassion. The God not of vengeance and violence, but as Christians believe, the God who showed himself preeminently in the life and self-sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I've just finished reading a biography of Martin Luther King and have been so impressed by his insistence on non-violence. Against all the odds, constant threat against his own life and family, attacks from white segregationists, including the police, against every march he led, he never sought to re retaliate and would ne never allow his supporters to retaliate because he knew that that was not the way of Jesus. The only way that f true freedom would come for white and black alike is to live peaceably and in love with one another. And of course, in 1968, his rejection of violence cost him his life. There can be no other way to live out the kingdom of God. What was true of Martin Luther King is true for us and all who claim to follow the Prince of Peace.
Together, let us affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our virtual choirs sing the anthem this is the record of John, music by Orlando Gibbons.
Our prayers of intercession this morning are led for us by Penny. Let us pray. The response to the bidding, Lord of our journey, is hear our prayer. Lord of our journey, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord of our journey, we thank you for all those who have gone before us and whose examples of following in the way of Jesus have helped and encouraged us. We pray for your people of faith in every country of the world, those serving you in difficult situations. We ask for your strength for those not able to express their faith freely, for those persecuted for their faith. We pray for the Bishop of London's steering, com steering group working to bring an end to the trafficking of people into modern-day slavery. We thank you for all those who have shone your light of unconditional love and peace with justice through the years. Lord of our journey, hear yeah. our prayer. Creator God, we thank you for your beautiful and diverse world. We bring it before you, broken and hurting, and ask for your wisdom to love and care for it as you would wish. Thank you for all those who are leading efforts to care for your creation in a sustainable way. Show us the part we can play to allow your creation to flourish. We pray for your leaders and governments of the nations that they would lead the way to a fair, just and equitable world through cooperation. We pray for the vaccination rollout worldwide, for generosity of spirit and a solution for a future equity in vaccine distribution throughout the world. Encourage and keep safe all those elite sports persons preparing to compete in the Olympic Games. We admire them for taking the gifts they have been given to such a high level. Strengthen and sustain them in the satisfaction of taking part with all its challenges and testing times. Be close to all those who haven't been chosen to represent their country. May life's lessons learned of respect, fairness, perseverance and camaraderie draw them closer to you. Lord of our journey, hear our prayer. God of our relationships, thank you for all those who have held our community together in so many ways through the difficult COVID times. Inspire us, open our minds and hearts and give us new energy and vision for new possibilities. Make us sensitive to the needs around us and we ask for guidance for the part each of us can play in the work of the Holy Spirit amongst us. Help us, like those elite athletes, to go forward with passion and commitment, supported and encouraged by others in our community. Lord of our journey, hear yes. our prayer. God of healing and wholeness, we bring before you all those suffering in body, mind or spirit. Those who are finding life hard going. We ask for healing for all those whose mental health has been damaged through the COVID restrictions, especially the young. Heal and restore them to full health. Give wisdom and empathy to all those in caring professions. We pray for all those requesting our prayers today and any known to us personally, that they may know God's healing and loving touch. Lord of our journey, hear our prayer. Lord of eternal life, we thank you for the hope you give us in the face of death. We pray for all those who have died recently and comfort all those grieving their loss. Lord of our journey, 
hear our prayer. And for our own journey, let us pray Paul's encouraging words to the Hebrews. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Receive this sign of peace. We sing together our hymn, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, 
ever giving himself that the world may live. May we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love, for he is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.